Hi again guys. The last video uh, we did, we solved a problem that looks really easy and it became not complicated but you have to work it out a lot. Uh, this is going to be basically the opposite. When you read this problem and you see this problem, it looks like something that is going to be really complicated and then when you start paying attention to the clues and try to solve it, you're going to realize that it's not as difficult as it looks like. As a matter of fact, it's a lot easy to do. It's easier to do than the other one. So it says the floor crane and the driver have a total weight of 2,500 pounds with the center of gravity at G. Why is that? First of all, because we have been told since I don't know when, long time ago, that we have to consider the total weight applied at the center of gravity. I have mentioned that a lot to you. So then we're going to have here at G a weight of 2,500 pounds. Now it says determine the largest weight of the drum. Largest weight of the drum. I don't know how much is this. Largest weight of the drum. That can be lifted without causing the crane to overturn when its boom is in the position shown. And this is important. It can be lifted without causing the crane to overturn. Okay, this is the clue that you have to take into account. If you lift this, what is going to happen is this uh, wheel here has to produce a reaction coming in this direction, which I'm going to call Vy. And what happens is that the whole thing is going to try, when, when I apply this load here, it's going to try to overturn with respect to this point. You see, it's lifting, but it, it's not going to lift, but it's at the brink, it's at the moment when it's about to lift in this position. That means that this wheel is barely in contact with the pavement and that means that the force that is supposed to be here doesn't exist, it's zero. And that's your clue, that force has to be zero because it's exactly at the moment when this is trying to overturn with respect to this point. So if we know this reaction is here, zero and we know this, uh, this is Vy and this is W, well basically the problem is solved. Reaction at A is zero, and then we have to calculate W. How do we calculate W? Well, we can do summation of moments with respect to the point B. Summation of moments with respect to the point B has to be zero. Let's do summation of moments with respect to this point. Then I have the first one is the 2500 vertical force. Distance has to be horizontal. How much is the distance? 8.4 plus 1.4. acting in this direction and this is the positive direction that I considered before. Now we also have the weight. I can move the weight here if I want to to see it clearly and then I have the distance is going to be this one which basically you can extrapolate that distance and put it here and the distance that I'm looking for is this distance. Is there any way that I can calculate this distance? Well, I know the total distance. The distance. Do I know this distance from here to here? No? Of course I know. Why? Because I know this angle. It says in the position shown of the boom. And the position shown of the boom shows this angle here is 30 degrees. Meaning the total distance here is going to be what? It's going to be 15 W times because it's a force, right? 15 times cosine of 30, that's the total distance, minus the distance from here to here, is going to give me the one that I'm looking for. So it's going to be the total minus this, is going to be this. What is this distance? 8.4. What is the direction? The direction is this, and that is negative. Any other vertical force with respect to this point? No, equals zero. And from here I can calculate the weight. Or 5.34 kip. You see how complicated, how, how long is this problem? It's just one step. 
but of course it's one step if you know what the problem is with this sentence here without causing the crane to overturn when the boom is in the shown position that's the key the key for this problem okay let's see another let's look at another problem similar to this one which is looking also for those type of clues and the problem says the ramp of a ship has a weight of 200 pounds and a center of gravity at g once again center of gravity at g determine the cable force in cd this cable force i don't know how much is that i'm going to call that tension needed to just just start lifting the ramp once again just start lifting the ramp means this reaction here is going to be zero and it probably tells you that but it shouldn't be telling you that also determine the horizontal and vertical same thing horizontal and vertical component of the force at the hinge pin a it shouldn't tell you that because you know this is a pin and if this is a pin you're going to have a force ax and a force ay that's it so basically our problem strives or consists on what calculating moments about any point but the problem becomes once again a geometric problem more than anything else so there are two ways of doing this problem i can calculate my tension directly if i want to because i can say oh wait a second this force here has two components how much is this angle here do you know how much is this angle there let's see I know this angle here is 30 degrees because it's given here 30 degrees and I know this angle here is 20 degrees this is the inclination of the ramp this is the ramp and I know my force is acting here and I know the total angle because this is 90 degrees if you complete this triangle here this is 90 degrees so I know this angle here has to be 40 degrees so there are several ways of doing this I can use my distances that I have all the distances that I have here and I can calculate uh, this like the component of the tension here and here also if I want to or well let's do it let's do it in that way first and then I'm going to go with the or so this value here let, let's forget about this for now let's calculate just this one here this one here and this one here so this value here of the tension this is going to be if this angle is 60 degrees this is going to be t sine 60 degrees and this one here is going to be t cosine 60 degrees correct yes what else do we know we know this distance from here to here is 9 and this angle here is 20 that means that this side here is going to be 9 sine 20 degrees and this distance which is uh, 3.078 and this distance here is going to be 9 cosine 20 degrees which is going to be 8.457 remember the distances are in feet I'm not going to put them for now so if I have that I can perfectly apply summation of moments with respect to the point A. What is that? Okay, let's see. It's going to be T sine of 60, this force, times the horizontal distance. And the horizontal distance is 8457 if I'm here and apply this force it's going to come like that it's going to come in this direction that's going to be negative now I have also this one which is going to be T cosine uh, 60 multiplied by the vertical distance because this is horizontal vertical distance 3.078 and this is going to come in this direction meaning it's going to be positive if you have doubts put your pin over there and apply your force in this direction and you will see it okay 3.078 what else do I have 
I have this, I have this, I'm missing this one because the G, at G, I'm gonna have the weight and the weight is 200. So 200 is this one here. How much is the distance between this and this? The force is vertical, the distance has to be horizontal. How much is that horizontal distance? Well, it's gonna be six, six times cosine of 20 degrees. So, and this is gonna be acting downwards, downwards here, and it's gonna come in this direction, meaning it's gonna be, uh, with respect to this point, it's gonna be positive, 200, positive 200 times six cosine of 20 degrees. Yeah, that's basically it, equals zero. And then you can solve for T and you're gonna get your T equal 194.92 pounds. Mm -hmm. Once you have that value over there mm -hmm. of T, the other thing that we have to do is just summation of forces in X and summation of forces in Y. And then we can say summation of forces in X equals zero. So we have T cosine 60 plus AX equals zero, which gives you AX equal negative uh, 97.46 pounds. And once again, same discussion, this negative sign here, what implies is that I assume AX in the wrong direction. So AX is gonna be going in the opposite direction to the one that I assume. It's going to be 97.46, but it's going to be acting in this direction. Um, if we do summation of forces in Y equals zero, then we can get that Y, 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 this one, T sine 60 degrees, this one minus 200 plus AY, remember AY is acting here, equals zero, and I know T. I plug T in, in here and then I get AY equal 31.19 pounds. And that's nice. And we have the solution. Now, pay attention to this because sometimes it, it worth it just to uh, wait a little bit before starting the problem. What if I want to keep this distant the way it is and the only thing that I do is say, or instead of decomposing this in horizontal and vertical, I'm gonna decompose my force T in this direction, in these components, and this component. This horizontal, not horizontal, this component in the direction of the ramp, if I do moment with respect to this point, is not gonna produce anything, correct? So the only thing that I have to do is calculate this component. And I know this angle, how much is this angle here? We just say that this angle is 40 degrees. So that means that this one is gonna be T sine 40 degrees, T sine 40 degrees, this one multiplied by nine. And the only thing that I have to do is calculate now and convert this weight and use the same distance because the weight is gonna be also this component and this component. But the horizontal, com not the horizontal, the component of the weight in the direction of the ramp is not producing anything. This angle is 20, meaning this angle is 20. And this one is gonna be the weight multiplied by cosine 20 times the distance six. Pay attention to whatever I say now, review it, and try to solve it in that way. I'm not gonna solve it, but you can solve it. I'm gonna use the time for solving another problem, which when people see this problem, also start going crazy with these type of problems, because it has springs. Oh, big deal, springs. People get scared of springs. Let's read the problem. It says, the horizontal beam is supported by springs at its ends. If the stiffness in the spring at A is Ka, so I know Ka is five kilonewton per meter, determine the required stiffness of the spring at B. So what I need to find is my stiffness at B so that the beam is loaded with this force, 800 newton force, Oh, this is important. 
remains in the horizontal position. So that means this, this beam is horizontal and because of this force it's going to move because those springs are going to stretch and it's going to move to a different position here but it's going to be horizontal also. So that means that if this is the deformation of the spring at A, the deflection here is going to be also the same thing. And this is our clue. The deformation at A is going to be equal to the deformation at B. Do you have something that is this distance? How do you know that distance? Because that's X, the spring constant, the spring uh, stretching. So basically, you remember F equal KX. If I find the forces, I find X because I have K. So let's do that. I can find the force FA and FB. Why? Because I can do summation of moments at A equals zero. And then what I have here is what? This is a spring. This is a tension. Tension A and this is tension B. That's it. Nothing else. So if I do moments at A, then and say this is positive, I'm going to have 800 times 1 and it's going to be negative acting in this direction plus TB multiplied by 3. Why plus? Because it's acting in this direction. And from here I can calculate TB equal 266.6 Newton. Now we do summation of forces in Y equals 0. So we can get TA minus 800 plus TB equals 0. Plug this into here. Calculate TA equal 533.3 Newton. There you go. Now what else do we know? We know KA. So we know that TA is going to be equal to KA times delta A or the stretching whatever way you want to call it so then I can calculate the how much the spring A is stretching which is TA divided by KA which is 533.3 divided by 5 kilonewton kilo three zeros and this is equal to 0 0.106 meters and we know that delta A equal delta B, so delta B is going to be equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.106 meters. And we know TB, so we can calculate the constant. The constant B is going to be equal to TB divided by delta B, which we know because it's delta A at the same time, 266.6 newton divided by 0 0.106 meters and this is going to be equal to 2500 newton per meter or ka is going to be equal to 2.5 kilonewton per meter you see how easy this type of problems here and usually if the the, the the worst case scenario is the beam is not going to remain horizontal if the problem doesn't say that but somehow you have to relate then the geometry and you might have triangles going this direction with the different uh, deformation here and here that's a different type of problem you might find that but in this problem it's easier because it says horizontal so horizontal means this deformation equal to this deformation okay that's all i have for today and i'll see you in the next recitation class thank you guys for watching